Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode... Raylan Trice, edge rusher out of Washington. Uh, we're going to be looking at him based on his production profile and other statistical factors. Um, Trice was a first-team All-Pac-12 from 2022 to 2023, which is an interesting number to say. Uh, about him and uh, what we're going to be looking at today is his production profile to see who he tested like uh, and also look at some of what his potential is based on his production profile so the first place you have to go to in terms of evaluating edge rushers if you're new to the channel new to the stuff that i do is i use defensive market share data uh, what that is is you take a raw statistic and you divide it by the team total to give you a market share score that score is then compared to positional peers to give a percentile score and then that score typically is also adjusted for their age to kind of show you how productive they were for their age. Um, and based on this particular number, uh, when you look at uh, Trice, he didn't really do that fantastically. Uh, he had a 50 percentile solo tackle score, um, 70 percentile in terms of his sack score, and uh, 60 percentile in terms of his tackle for loss score. Um, all of those numbers are not quite near the all-pro averages or Pro Bowl averages at the position. Uh, they're closer to the starter averages with the exception of his solo tackle production. Uh, but this is kind of what you're looking at in terms of his production traits. He's kind of wishy-washy in terms of that particular area for him. Uh, and then when you look at some more uh, production data for him, uh, looking at things like uh, forced fumbles and pass deflection market share, um, his forced fumble production was really not there at all. Uh, and his pass deflection data was a little bit better. Uh, but overall, it doesn't quite hit the averages at the starter averages, Pro Bowl averages, and All-Pro averages in terms of that particular metric as well. And this is out of 1,799 edge rushers since the 1989 NFL draft class. So it's a lot of prospects in this particular database. Moving on to adjusted production scores, because I know what a lot of you guys are going to tell me if you're new to the channel is, well, I mean, he wasn't that productive, but he played at Washington, man. And Washington is, is a great Pac-12 football team, man. So, I mean, uh, you know, but here's the thing. Adjust the production, just so you guys know, adjusts for that level of competition. So it looks at where they played, you know, how good of a team were they on, uh, their strength of schedule. What was their strength of schedule like? Did they play tough competition? Did they play not so tough competition? And, of course, looking at the age of them as well to kind of give you you know, how productive were they for their age, for their level of competition, and for their level of team that they were on. And when you look at him in terms of that particular metric, he doesn't really do that hot. Um, 56 percentile in terms of his pass score, um, 70 percentile in terms of his MSA, which is by far his best metric, uh, and 39 percentile in terms of his age score. Um, again, all those numbers are not anywhere near the all-pro averages, Pro Bowl averages, or starter averages at the position. More so, you would have to bet on him, you know, being a Pro Bowl or starter um, who's below what you want at that position, you know, below the average of what you're looking for. So not the best sort of production crew to test with. Um, in terms of comparisons for him, so I went back and I looked at all the data marks in terms of guys who tested similar to him based on his solo tackle production, his sacks, tackle for loss, uh, age, uh, and all other guys who kind of had a similar EAV, which is their expected approximate value scores. Um, and taking a look at all those numbers, um, Trice did not quite hit with a great group of guys. Uh, most of the players on here are mainly just backups. I think the best comparison for him, at least recently, would be like Anthony Ciccolo, um, who did some interesting things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, he was a starter at one point for a little bit, and that might be what Trice becomes, you know. Might become kind of a starter for a little bit until he kind of falls off, um, unless he becomes a massive outlier. Uh, and a lot of that will come down to his athleticism testing. So, again, Trice, uh, for an outlook for him, uh, he profiles as a backup to spot starter long term. Um, the biggest weaknesses of Trice are his age and overall production profile. Some have Trice as a day one to two draft pick this year. That's a little too rich for me. However, this is more of a day three pick based on his production profile. So, Round four is where I kind of feel most comfortable taking Trice if he tests well as an athlete. Obviously, if he doesn't test well at all as an athlete, then I'm going to have some issues. I'm going to have some concerns with him um, as a pick. But if he does test well as an athlete, then I definitely think day three is in the possibilities for him. But again, most players with this profile, realistically, 
despite how athletic they test, become backups, or at the very least, they become players who kind of underperform what you want from them long term. So that is a profile for Trice in terms of his overall long term outcomes based on data. Of course, my name is Jim Coburn. You can follow me at Jimmetrics on Twitter, also known as X. Uh, J-I-M-E-T-R-I-C-S. Also check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash jcoburn. Uh, just so you guys know, if you're a big fan of the channel and you want to see videos early, go to my Patreon. Uh, I post a lot of these videos there early for my Patreon subscribers, so definitely check that out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!